Now, the second piece that's in here that is uh, causing me, um, as always, uh, uh, some uh, frustration uh, is uh, a section that my colleague also talked about, which was um, to share some information. And again, boy, I think we've got to be careful about that. I know that we're trying to track people in the system for reasonable reporting. Fine, we want to make people sure people don't rip off the system. But you know what? Every time they do a, a scientific study on people ripping off uh, government benefits, it comes back with the same numbers. There are 3% of the population which are incorrigible. They are going to try and rip off whatever system they are involved with. And they will probably... Yeah, well, yes, actually, that's not a bad example of um, Mr. Carson, but they are going to do it in whatever system that they're involved with. And they are usually successful because they're pretty persistent in trying to do it. But all of these other imagined rip-offs of, of government benefit programs just aren't there. And so people that, and they, I can't believe the number of people that buy into this. It's like an urban myth. Uh, the, the people that phone my office and say, well, I know that person was ripping off welfare because I saw them smoking a cigarette. Well, smoking is still legal if you're over 18, and nothing says that when you get a welfare benefit, you can't go out and buy cigarettes with it. But, oh, it's ripping off welfare. Just, uh, anyway, so collecting information, trying to uh, track the, um, the, the, <laughs> uh, the, uh, the reporting of it is fine. But I, I think when we get into Committee of the Whole, I'm going to make more of a point of coming back about um, uh, potential ch challenges or what I would think uh, could be breaches of uh, individual privacy um, around uh, what's contemplated in this act. So um, I, I can sense that the patience of the assembly to follow me through this convoluted story today is not quite there. Uh, so I will return to it uh, when we're in committee of the whole, because I think this, this is important. And I have no wish to see people victimized twice, which is what happens. Um, and I cannot begin to describe to you guys how important privacy of personal information is, um, but also how easy it is to breach that, whether it's just one little finger, li a little child's finger on a send button or an enter button, and your information or someone's information has gone across the world forever. You cannot get it back. You can't stop it once it's gone into cyberspace. So protection, we're, government is the last bastion of protection of people's personal information. And yes, we are also the people that are responsible, we, government is also responsible for collecting information and making sure that we're, we're tabulating and keeping statistics. But you don't need to, to use people's defining information to do that. Um, you need enough information, uh, and it, you know why? Sometimes we keep all this information and we don't need to. So we have an example of that that was before us in the news today. So information was to be used uh, when people were applying for a job and starting a job with the school board of Edmonton. And, uh, it wasn't to be kept in a file forever, uh, but indeed it was. And then it was on somebody's uh, electronic thingamajig. Memory stick. Memory stick, thank you for the technical term. Um, but everybody knew what I meant. Uh, on their memory stick and somehow it's gone missing. Uh, and therefore, uh, we now have 7,000 people uh, that were involved uh, in some way with the Edmonton Public School Board, their personal information, including banking information, and, uh, you know, their, their, their resume details. So that's going to include a home address, a phone number, a date of birth, a social insurance number. This is the, like, foosh, this is what makes my hair catch on fire. Why do we keep repeating the same mistake over and over and over? And we do. And I'll be honest with you, the, um, the Minister of Service Alberta has not helped by disbanding the group that was in her department that actually gave advice. Because, Mr. Speaker, when I took this seriously and went out and tried to encrypt my laptop so that I couldn't be accused, of, if I left it somewhere, of letting information out, it was not easy. 
And frankly, the Commissioner of, of Privacy Information could not help me with how I was supposed to do this. They said, well, just do it. I said, but how? Do I buy a program? Is there a thing you need that I plug into it? What do I do? And they said, just do it. Great, thanks. IT couldn't help me. I ended up having to phone around to a bunch of other people to get information on how the heck I was to encrypt this computer. And I ended up buying a computer program for 150 some odd dollars and loading it onto my computer so now it encrypts everything I do. And if it got lost or walked away or whatever, nobody could, what they would get out of it would be gobbledygook. They, without the encryption uh, password, they can't get anything from it. And I had to do the same thing for the thingamajig that I download back up everything with on every Friday. And that was another some odd hundred dollars. Well, you know. You know exactly what I mean, so, as long as I describe it well. So, it, it's not easy, but boy, you've got to do this stuff. So, um, I'll just put the fire in my hair out and, and uh, sit down uh, now that I've given everyone a lecture on that. Sorry, I do get carried away, don't I? Um, but uh, generally, I'm in agreement with the uh, principle and the direction of where this is going in second reading. I just have some very particular problems with certain sections of it. And I will come back and, and address those in uh, Committee of the Whole, which is the appropriate place to go word by word sentence by sentence, clause by clause. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to the principal of the bill in second reading, Mr. Speaker. Well.